What's up everyone? It's Chrono here again. This time I'm going over one of the builds that uh, I enjoy for boss killing. Uh, it's not so fantastic for, you know, clearing maps super fast or anything like that. It's not anything super flashy. Uh, well, I guess it's flashy. It literally just lights up your entire screen with ice. I guess you consider that flashy. Uh, but it's really good at killing bosses. Uh, this is the primary build that I use to kill Shaper, for example. You can do Uber Lab with it. Um, unfortunately, though, it uses Valpact, so mm, I don't like using it over some of my other builds uh, in the Uber Lab because you can't really regenerate your health from traps. You have to use your flasks, and that can get a little bit sketchy. So I'm just gonna, let's say we'll do a Phoenix. Let's do a Phoenix. Uh, let's do an unmodded Phoenix because I don't want anything to go super wrong. And I'll go over the build in detail after after this run, essentially. So pretty much what it is is you use Caswell channeling mixed with the Whispering Ice staff here. Uh, I didn't mention what the build was until now. It's a Whispering Ice build. Uh, it uses the staff, the Whispering Ice. This staff gives you the access to this skill, Ice Storm. When you're combining it with Caswell Channel, it means you get a lot of Ice Storms really fast with almost no mana cost, which is very nice. Alright, let's continue to run. So pretty much, you just, yeah, you just go on, you just lay down ice, and as soon as you start casting it, it will continue. So, uh, I think I did a breach run at one point, where I got completely frozen by Toll, and I just had the ice going still, and I was able to kill him while I was completely frozen, because it kept just leeching the damage back to me, uh, just doing this, essentially. It just had all the ice on the ground, and as you can see, I'm actually getting kind of low, um... It, it does take some getting used to. Uh, I haven't been running the build much lately, so I've forgotten a few things and a few ways to position. It's a, a lot about positioning with this, because uh, if you get stunned before you can start getting the ice storms off, it can be pretty devastating. But generally, if you can start getting the ice storms off, it'll stun them instead. Like that, that was pretty horrible. Uh, getting stunned sucks really, really bad, and you can't use an Eye of Cheula with this build, and I will go over that later, mainly because of stats. So you don't really have immunities to stuns, unfortunately. But I think one of the Berserker um, Ascendancies, if I remember correctly, uh, makes it so when you get stunned, you can't be stunned again right away. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, let's not run straight into that stuff. Oh, it's a corruption, okay. And for things like this where you have time to actually set up, like, let's see how fast we can kill this guy. Just set up so many ice storms. And he's dead, there we go. See, that's always good. It's really good for killing bosses, like I said. Or stationary targets. It's really good at killing stationary targets. And high health targets. Just because the skill itself does a lot of damage. It is very, um, visually noisy, though. If this is the type of thing you do not like to see, or if you have frame rate issues already, you may not want to really make an attempt at it, but... If, uh, if you use the dynamic resolution and stuff, and you don't have too many frame rate issues, it's not so bad. Did I kill the guy? No. He's down here now. Get back here. And, oh god, they're all... Is there two? No, okay, he was just summoning two things at once. Jeez. Again, getting stunned at the beginning of that is... That's like the worst part of this build, is when you go up and you just get that one hit that stops your Scorching Ray and you know that's like the feeling that you're just not doing what you want to do, you're not dealing the damage, you're not leeching, you're like, oh no. It's just not a very nice feeling. I, uh, I'm 
I was gonna say, you, I don't think you could really use the Kelm's roots in this build, but that could be interesting to try to look into. Generally, you want to stack as much intelligence on all of your gear as you possibly can. Intel, life, and resists. That's pretty much it. Uh, because the staff itself gives you uh, a bonus. For the amount of intelligence you have, you gain a bonus to your actual spell damage. So, that's pretty nice. And it's the primary reason why you stack just so much in build. It also gives you a decent amount of mana, and by using mind over mana... Mind, mind over mana? Really? Mind over matter? Uh, <laughs> It lets you uh, be just that little bit more tanky. Which w makes it not so bad as a life build since they nerfed uh, everything else pretty much. It's pretty horrible. But yeah, like I said, this isn't the fastest clear speed build. I don't have to kill all these things, but this is just how I play. So I'm, uh, it's a representation of what I do. Probably skip ahead to the boss fight if you go. There is the boss. Kill these guys too. I'm gonna set up a portal just in case. Shouldn't need it though. This is a basic map. Uh, I'll resummon my guy. So yeah. Let's see. So as long as we're not standing right there, we should be fine. Yeah, we can tank that attack. Don't really want to tank everything. Just move out of the way real quick. There we go. You can also give yourself a uh, fortify if you use vigilant strike on him every so often. You just really have to watch when he uses that big attack. And I died. So I shouldn't have died there. I just stood there hoping that I'd be able to face tank it while there was a lot of crap on the screen and not enough ice in the path between him and me. So that was completely my mistake. Uh, if you don't play super recklessly like I do, you can do all these things deathless. It's great. But unfortunately, yeah. Ugh. And if you remember to cast your orb storms so that you actually get the nice 40% damage buff, that's always good too. There we go, just pull him in. You can face tank his normal attacks just fine. It's that attack you really don't want to. This is the key to a Actually, I'm wondering if I could have face tanked that. As long as I had a knife ice on him, I might have been able to. But anyways, we'll go over the actual build itself now. Here, I'll take you through the tree here a little bit. You start over in the Marauder area, of course, and you just go through the fastest possible routes to get to your notables. So these down here I actually don't really need, but it gives you uh, some extra life, so that's why I picked those up. Uh, you can convert those to some other areas if you really want. Uh, there's two jewel sockets here that I'm going to explain are the Brute Force Solution. It turns every strength node in its radius, whether it's allocated or not, into intelligence. So everything in this circle becomes intel. Everything in this circle becomes intel, because this is also a Brute Force Solution. And these are the two areas you'd put this. And aside from those, you'd use Izaro's Turmoil. So eh, you can get other jewels. If you can get perfect uh, fire and cold jewels, uh, just elemental jewels in general, that uh, are these two specific because you convert all of your damage into fire damage, which I'll go over here. You use Avatar Fire. So Avatar Fire converts absolutely everything to fire you can't do non fire damage so it's very important um mind over matter here again so it makes you a little bit more tanky and you get the fire nodes you get the cold nodes and all that just all gets converted into fire I use elemental overload well, like i said i should have been using my orb of storms more this will make you do 40 percent more elemental damage and that would have probably helped a lot during that fight uh, but I forgot to cast it a bunch of times, meh, whatever. Uh, more Azaros Turmoil, I just use these, they're super easy, and they're pretty much the jewel that you want. You can get better jewels. You can craft much better jewels, but these are good stepping stones, essentially. 
uh, and you will do something very similar to the brute force, but for dexterity right here, fertile mind. Same thing as brute force, but for dex. And you just plonk it here, all the dex becomes intel, good stuff. Uh, Vow Pact, this is what I was explaining, you don't want to go through Uber Lab too much because Vow Pact makes it so you cannot gain life regen, but you can leech instantly from all of your damage, so that is very, very helpful. Uh, you gain some cold nodes over up here, and you gain... Ooh, what was I looking at before? Oh my god. Well, we'll find it. Oh yeah, and some uh, skill duration here. Yeah, for the actual ice storm itself. It make it last a little longer, so you get more stacked on top of each other. It's, it's pretty nice. That's pretty much it. You just go through, you get... The fire nodes, you get cold nodes, you get life, and you get intel. You get as much intel as you can, just tons of intel everywhere. Because the Whispering Ice uh, mines 18%, but I think it can go higher, and it'll increase your intelligence just by that percent. So your flat intel gets increased by 18%, which is very, very nice. As well as that 1% increased spell damage per 10 intellect, which is also very nice. An uh, important thing to note about this staff, you do not need to link anything other than Caswell Channel and Scorching Ray. As long as you can use Scorching Ray, it will Caswell Channel the ability the staff has. So it'll use the Ice Storm, or the uh, Ice Storm, yeah. Okay. And everything else will just automatically apply to Ice Storm. So the Fire Pen, Elemental Focus, Cold to Fire, and the conic effect, which uh, I usually have. Yeah, here it is. Increased area of effect if you just want to clear maps, and purity of elements if you're having some maps that reduce your elemental, like they give you LE weakness. You can use purity of elements, and it'll help you out there too. Now, generally, all of your gear, you'll want intellect, life, resists. Intellect, life, resists. A little bit of spell damage if you use the fingerless silk gloves, which are quite yeah, a little bit of a boost. And then again, intellect, life, resist. Very simple. That's literally all you have to go for. The only other uh, unique that you could really throw on here that would be helpful is the um, Black Sun Crest, which gives you 15% increased intellect, uh, intelligence as well. So that percentage increase to your flat intellect uh, can be pretty beneficial to you and um, to cover all of the costs because you're converting all of the decks in those nodes you're converting all the strength in those nodes and you're not really getting those stats on your gear you use an astramentus this is the the most expensive part of this build this staff you could buy for an alk uh, this helmet you could probably buy for like maybe a couple chaos for really good rolls uh, I use a Calm's Heart. <laughs> That's not needed, but I I feel like now I feel bad that I died in this fight with all the the Calm's Heart and everything. But ugh. anyways, uh, yeah, the most expensive part will be this Astramentus to cover all of the stat requirements for all of your gear. And that's pretty much it. As long as you just stack tons and tons of intellect, you, you just use this. Kill everything and that's pretty much it you just you just stand in one place and you just attack stuff and it'll die uh, the added bonus of having the castle channel scorching ray is scorching ray gives you the debuff right there it says at the bottom minus three percent fire resistance per stage so that is another nice since you're converting all of your damage to fire that's a nice little bonus as well uh, just to help push it over the top. This It already does a lot of damage, especially against targets that you can just get to stand in front of you. So uh, that's pretty much the gist of this build. Uh, if you want something that can clear bosses super easy, uh, if you don't play really stupid like I do, you can probably use this build in hardcore, and it would work, you know, just easy. It's, it kills bosses like nothing. And the only real issue is that initial stun, like I was mentioning, as you just have to get away from that initial stun. I'll go over some of the other stuff here. So I have Flame Dash linked with uh, Ar Arcane Surge. So anytime I use 
Orb of Storms, or Arcane Surge, it'll give you this buff. Spell damage and cast speed. And mana regeneration. The mana regen is almost useless, but uh, the other two is just super helpful. So every time you do this, Arcane Surge. Put this up, Arcane Surge. And it just gives you a nice little bonus. And uh, you just link it in with the uh, blind support. So if you're against bosses that can be blinded, using this on the boss will blind them, give you even more tankiness. So it does tons of damage and keeps you safe. Over on this side, cast on damage, very simple. Uh, use an enfeeble mixed with a curse on hit and a ball lightning. This will just enfeeble everything it come across. As and it just again more tankiness most of this is just to help you stay alive the st the flame golem isn't a necessity but it's a nice little boost of damage so why not vigilant strike again um gives you the fortify yeah, you almost never have to use it it's only against certain bosses really uh faster attacks and arctic armor so uh Faster attacks on for the vigilant strike, so you don't just stand there and you can actually I do this smack yet. them. Yeah, and the Arctic armor, since you're just standing here going like this, you're always standing still, which means Arctic armor is useful. Yay, useful. So yeah, throw on elemental focus, fire penetration, castle channel, scorching ray, cold to fire, and conch effect. If you want, you can swap out the increased effect with the conch effect. For when you just want to go through a map, or if you're leveling, uh, just anything after Act 4, pretty much. Because, yeah, in between 33 and 38, it's a bit of a slog. You burn through mana super fast using the actual Ice Storm manually. But once you get Caswell Channel, it just becomes cake. Oh, it's so easy. So, yeah, if you want a good boss killer, and uh, play safer than I do, and want to do maybe a bit hardcore or do all these bosses, this can kill Shaper. Like I mentioned, this is my primary Shaper killer. Uh, so it, it just makes it pretty simple. It's not that hard to set up. Sometimes, depending on the league, the jewels can be expensive, uh, but they are they're just increase of damage, really. They're just more and more damage. You can still get by just fine without some of this stuff. Uh, just get the staff, castle channel, start building intellect, you're good to go. So until next time, I will see you guys later.